My name, Sh my name is Sharon Jeffers. I'm going to talk about 2551 Coolidge Avenue, where I lived in West Los Angeles in the 1940s. The street originated at St. Joan of Arc Catholic Grammar School and ended two blocks south, where Coolidge Avenue did it, ended into Richland Avenue Elementary. The street was lined with small stucco California-style bungalows, each with a double garage. Los Angeles was a boom town, and the vacant lots on Coolidge Avenue filled, filled quickly with houses. Midwestern and East Coast families bought the little houses and filled them with children for the schools at either end of the street. The front yards became one long playground. Our front yard, like the neighbors, was planted with grass. One small area had a circular depression, and indeed, Irma Bombeck was right, the grass was always greener over the septic tank. Every house had a similar indentation. Our parents warned us off the depressions and told horror stories of being close to a collapsed cesspool. We gave the greenest grass a wide berth even as we played our uh, our slightly modified version of kickball soccer with pre-war pre basketballs. We played four square on the driveway with the same basketball. Our sidewalk was used for nine square hopscotch. Taylor's chalk marked the squares and the waxy residue stayed for weeks. We didn't <clears throat> we didn't play indoors. It rarely rained, and if it did rain, we sailed leaves in the gutter water until it dispersed in the bean fields at the Coolidge Avenue dead end. The underdeveloped lot, lots scattered between the bungalows were a favorite do-it-yourself playground. An ungroomed leaping willow in the center of a vacant lot was a a favorite play spot. The Bowers formed a clubhouse for the girls on Coolidge Avenue. We played house under the trees, picked bouquets of wild poppies for decorations, and it also sort of served as a ranch house when we played Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. One day we crawled under the tree and it suddenly rained worms in my hair, down my shirt. It still makes me shiver. The tree lost all its magic with one worm storm. There was a variety of wildlife in the vacant lots there were more ple that were more pleasant than willow tree worms. A chrysalis for a swallowtail butterfly <clears throat> with a great, was a great find. We could stake out for, uh, for days waiting for a turn from worm to butterfly. We only once saw the swallowtail metamorphose. Morning and monarch butterflies were easy to, to catch and release. These vacant lots had milkweed, wild mustard, Indian tobacco, and California poppies growing wild and thriving with the moisture from the daily ocean fog that rolled in every afternoon about 3 p.m. Gophers provided endless entertainment. We blocked one exit and their canny architects rerouted the community tunnels. Our parents fought the gophers much more than, with much more lethal weapons, exhaust gas from a car, flooded tunnels, and commercial traps. Golf courses and large estates in nearby Beverly Hills hired professional gopher eradicators. This, sort, this morning, 75 years later, on the opposite side of the country, Pedro and Dude and the Goose Master chased Canada geese on the, on the pond the same, with the same zeal that our parents had hunting gophers in our gardens with seemingly no better luck.